When you take a look behind me, you can see that I obviously have a lot of passion for the sea, for ships. I love pirates and Royal Navy. I love all those things. So it's no surprise that movies dealing with these things are special to me. Well, the movie we're, we're, we are reviewing tonight is The Buccaneer, and it came out in 1958. And it stars Yul Brynner, Charlton Heston, Charles Boyer. So it has an awesome cast. It's a Cecil B. DeMille film, and in fact, it would be his final film. He, they, he didn't really direct it, which is unfortunate. In fact, it was handed off to Anthony Quinn to direct the movie because Cecil B. DeMille was pretty sick at this point in his life. So it was directed by Anthony Quinn, that famous actor, and it was actually the only movie that Anthony Quinn would ever direct. But anyways, The Buccaneer, it's about Jean Lafitte. And Jean Lafitte is played by Yul Brynner. Yul Brynner is wearing a wig in this movie. He's not, <laughs> he's not bald in it. But Yul Brynner, he plays a pretty convincing buccaneer. He's, and Jean Lafitte, of course, is the famous privateer who helped the U.S. win eight, the War of 1812 with the British. But I'll get to all that when I talk about the plot. Charlton Heston, he has, he's playing Andrew Jackson, General Andrew Jackson, for the second time. He played Andrew Jackson in... The President's Lady, which came out a few years earlier in 1953. And I have a lot of interesting things to say about that when I get to some of the books that I have on Charlton Heston. And Charles Boyer, who he's definitely in my top 10 of favorite actors of all time. He's a little aged in this movie. Granted, it came out in 1958. But Charles Boyer, he plays the basically the right-hand man to Jean Lafitte. His name, he's the general, and he's this French, he's this Frenchman who lies and says that he was in Napoleon's army and that he was this great general, but of course he's not telling the truth. But Charles Boyer was a lot of fun to watch in this movie. He was sort of the comedic relief. And Claire Bloom, she plays one of the leading female leads in this in this movie so the plot of the movie as i said it's about jean lafitte um and jean lafitte was a privateer around the time of 1812 and basically he only attacked ships that were not american ships so he would attack spanish ships and french ships and british ships i suppose and so he didn't really he didn't have a beef with the Americans. He respected them a little bit. And anyways, it's 1812 and the British are attacking the U.S. again. We all remember from our history classes. And the British, I believe, had burned down the Capitol or the White House. I don't, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> but um, so don't watch this review for, for a test or anything like that. But anyways, Jean Lafitte he decides to basically he has to decide whether to help the americans or not he has to rally his fellow pir privateers his his crew to fight with him to help andrew jackson and the american military defeat the british so that's basically the story of course they throw in a love affair with um the governor of Louisiana or New Orleans or his daughter they throw that in of course for a little bit of romance in the movie and so that is the plot um, it's an interesting plot of course they try to be as true to history as possible but um, I love the story and before I watched this movie this was my first time to see it I was honestly hoping for this to be a great film of the sea. Um, I was expecting a movie at sea, basically, where it would be shot on location at sea with ships and, you know, basically mutiny on the bounty type things, or even like Captain Blood or the Seahawk. I was completely wrong. 
this entire movie is pretty much shot on sets. Um, they spent a lot of money on these sets and uh, the costumes as well. Basically, it's the Cecil B. DeMille style, but everything was done on sets. When they were on ships, you could tell it was a set. The battle scenes, it was on a set. There were maybe a few scenes where it showed a ship actually on the sea, but for the most part, it's all on sets. Like when they're talking on a ship, they're on a set. And that was pretty disappointing to me, um, since, since it's it's definitely an epic movie, but I don't know, it just lacked a lot of realism, which I'll get to. Um, it's a pretty basic script, pretty basic story, um, and honestly, I believe that the actors, Boyer, Heston, and Brenner, saved this movie from a t being a total bust, because they're such great actors, they made it and a pretty a pretty entertaining movie but the battle of new orleans which is towards the end of the film was also very impressive now as i said it was done on a set you can clearly tell it's on a set even the fog and all that the trees all on a set but it was pretty impressive because they were shooting rockets and the rockets were real cool if you see this movie, you'll know what I'm talking about because it was pretty impressive. I don't think I've seen real rockets being shot in movies back then and they'd go whizzing past <laughs> their heads and things like that. But um, And Heston, he was a perfect Andrew Jackson. And I'll get to some of the things he says. He feels like he had perfected uh, Andrew Jackson at this point. But my biggest beef of, with the film is that it lacked any sense of realism and it lost a lot of excitement because of that it felt like a play a lot of the time because it was all on a set and that and like I said the scenes at sea were boring and just I was real upset with that so biggest beef it lacked any realism basically um, I'm gonna give this movie two and a half stars and now I would like to get to some of my interesting things that I have to say from my books. I'll start with from Charlton Heston's autobiography. <clears throat> all right, I have quite a bit to read ab about this, but it's all interesting. I went almost at once into shooting for The Buccaneer, which Tony Quinn was directing. Though I'd never worked with him, I'd admired him for a long time as an actor, but this was his first time behind the camera. I liked what he did there. In the original film, Jackson had not been a large part. For this version, they'd made it a co-starring ro role with Yul Brynner's Jean Lafitte. We'd had a good chemistry in The Ten Commandments together, which, of course, they were in. Um, and he goes on to say, my first day of shooting, Demille invited me to lunch with him. I love this story. <laughs> I've, I'd heard he hadn't been near the Buccaneer set. He'd have surely been a, a daunting figure for Tony to see standing in the shadows. So I wasn't surprised when he met, surprised when he met me at his table in the studio restaurant. That was where I'd been presented to him one of the founding fathers of film while I was shooting my first film for Wallace. I'd waved to him then driving off the lot. And he goes on to say, after lunch, he poured me a glass of Madeira from a bottle dated 1815. Quote, that's the year Jackson fought at New Orleans, he said, lifting his glass. You know all that. You do your research. You'll be a good Jackson. Better now than you played him at Fox. When was that? 1952, I said. I think I've got a better handle on him now. Um, we all get better. Try to, anyway. He sipped his Madeira. I understand William Wyler wants you for Ben-Hur. So they tell me. But, but he can't decide which part. He chuckled. <laughs> well, Ben-Hur's the part, of course. You can always get good actors to play bad men. Heroes are harder. Raymond Navarro was wrong for it in the silent version in 1926. Dead wrong. You can do that part. I'd call up Willie, Mr. Wyler and tell him 
but directors like to make sure make their own choices. Willie sure does. So he should, so he should. The old man mused a moment. Yes, that'll make quite a picture. High time someone did it. Get it right this time. You could see the fires rise in his eyes. If I were you, I wouldn't worry. I was due on the set. I thanked him for the lunch. I should have thanked him for my career. I never saw him again. My Jackson was better this time around. I was more secure as an actor. I found Tony a stimulating and sensitive director. I had a firmer grip on the accent. And then 10 days or so into shooting my scenes, I realized I'd made a terrible mistake. And his mistake was that he messed up his <laughs> his makeup um, for the final battle scenes. Jackson at the time wasn't so old and Heston told his makeup artist to make him appear basically like he was uh, in his 60s basically so he had latex wrinkles and things like that and he says that he felt terrible about that and he even told he said I'm afraid that wasn't the only thing that went wrong with the film in spite of the fine film work Tony did with the actors including me the picture simply didn't lift. It was okay. That's not good enough. I think only Mr. DeMille could have made a DeMille picture. I agree. Charlton Heston. And then I also have Charles Boyer's bi biography, which I have never read from before for my reviews. It just has a little thing that's interesting. So... Let's see. DeMille was credited only as the producer of a major flop. Boyer deeply regretted having submitted himself to an encore as Bonaparte, fear fearing that the second appearance might compromise the first timeless performance, which is referring to, of course, uh, to the film in which Charles Boyer played Napoleon which I actually want to see and review for this channel. But I have some really cool pictures to show from the film. Here you can see the makeup done for Charlton Heston as Andrew Jackson. Let me try to get that other picture for you. You can see him on his horse at the battle. The makeup was perfect for him. And I have one other picture to quickly show you. I know the review's going a little bit long, but I had a lot to say. A lot of interesting things to read. And here's a picture just of Cecil, Mr. DeMille, basically, with Charlton Heston, as dressed up as Andrew Jackson. This is on set, and he's presenting him with a little statue of Andrew Jackson. Just as a token, basically, here you go, your second time playing Andrew Jackson. Glad to have you on board. But that's going to be it for this review. Um, it was a pretty good movie, but honestly, it was a little bit forgettable. It cost $5 million to make and only made a little bit over $3 million, So they took a big hit <laughs> with this one. But anyways, hopefully my next movie at sea is a better one. But... That's going to be it. Have a good night.